Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Ben the Human Plays Vagros the Riven Realms. We're here in Agaros Work Camp. We gotta take Shamsi to her uncle in the Mines of Plenty. But we had to cross the salt the salt plains anyway to get to Salem and then and then continue beyond. But we might as well take this this task for the Crimson Gate. Eh, that's the only one anyway. We still have a lot of food. We do have a bunch of random crap. So we should probably just sell those. And then... And then I think we just get on our way. We still have some movement, so we might as well. We could, like, mine illegally. <laughs> but I don't think that matters. Can I send... Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think there's any chance we get any supplies in the salt fields. I wonder, is it bad if we sleep in the salt fields? Let's find out. Apparently not. It's only bad if you decide to work in the salt fields. You can wander through to your heart's content. I didn't mean to... Leave this place. I didn't mean to do that. Acquire supplies. No, don't do that. Let's just camp. Elani was grievously wounded? That's news to me. How did that happen? Let's get some vigor back. And then we've reached Salem. This is good. In we go. Uh, go ahead and inspect. Show our licenses. And in we go. Alright, Lumen, Devon. Devon, Lumen. That's it. <laughs> Alright, let's sell the... Let's sell the... One of our beasts of burden. And honestly, we should start gearing up to... Well... I was gonna say, we should start gearing up to have more horses, but we already had 36 horses. Which is kind of bonkers. So maybe... Maybe we go for 30 riders? I shouldn't have bought so many horses. 35 horses seems good. You can only take 50 people through with you through the gate anyway, including horses. So we don't want to have too many. The nice thing is you can just leave them in the... in the liminal space between realms and it totally works out. Alright, we don't have any more movement today, so let's go ahead and rest... on the ground. Don't send your dudes out. Ilani continues to heal. Uh, let's go ahead and leave. And the mine- I'm interested to see what happens with Shamsi when we reach the mines. I have a bad feeling about her uncle, but maybe he's fine. Who knows? He could be okay. Ah, just shy. Alright, rest time. And then into the mines. We let them inspect, show them our license, in we go. Turn this in. Yeah, we shouldn't take any more missions, and this one's going to the Crimson Gate, so. Alright, so, M Metal is the name of the game. We should, pro we should buy the silver. We still don't have a full stack of silver. Now... How much do we think we can fit through the gate, is the question. Because we can get a stack of copper, a stack of bronze. Almost a stack of tin. I don't think I want to bring any more iron. Iron actually makes the least percentage back on what you put into it. So that should be our lowest priority. I think we could get eight stacks through. Probably a bit more, but we'll see. I think that's good for now. Now, exchange news. The little girl returned. Deliver Shamsi to her uncle. It is time to look for Shamsi's uncle, Heshet. After asking around, you find out that he is still alive and indeed working here. Locals point you to a relatively fresh dig site just outside the town's bounds. Prospecting here has apparently only just begun. There is a provisory camp with, a few, with but a few hastily raised workers' huts. 
You locate a foreman who, after listening to your explanation, is friendly enough to lead you to Heshit's sack. <laughs> Heshit's shack. Oops. You and Shamsi follow the man. The girl had been fairly quiet and unassuming while traveling with the Komitatis, but now there's an expectant glimmer in her eye. As you, as you arrive at the door, the foreman knocks. Heshit, you've got visitors. A deep, confident voice replies from within. Enter. You and Shamsi step inside. The foreman stays at your side as well, possibly to make sure you are indeed here to deliver Heshit's niece and not say do him any harm. Indeed, you inside you find a cramped living space filled with tools of a mining engineer's trade, yet it is cozy enough in, given its surroundings. There is a small stove where a middle-aged bearded fellow with a leather apron is stirring the contents of a clay pot. How may I help you? He inquires in an authoritative yet amicable voice. When he turns around and sees, Sh then he turns around and sees Shamsi. His face grows pale, and then he takes a step back involuntarily, almost knocking the pot from the stove as he tries to steady himself. You start to explain how you found Shamsi at the market of Larnak before, but before you could get into it, Heshit interrupts you, staring at his niece in disbelief. But, but that can't be. He stutters. Impossible. She... His expression turns out of sheer terror. You're confounded. Unsure of what to make of the situation, you look at Shamsi. Except she's not Shamsi anymore! Oh my god! There's a sickening, wet, squelching sound as the little girl's skull splits in half all by itself. Where one would expect bone, blood, and brain, you see some green-gray glistening texture and a mass of writhing tentacles. Holy god! The foreman stumbles back. Heshit screams! The body of the thing that used to be Shamsi, the thing that you traveled with, keeps splitting in half until in a matter of seconds it is completely shed like the skin of a peeled fruit. What remains is truly beyond description. Before you could react, not that you would know how to, the abomination lashes out with its oozing tentacles and wraps them around Heshit's head and neck. You can now see one of the hor horrific appendages worming itself into the man's mouth. Then there is a sharp snapping sound as the spine breaks, blood spurts forth, and the creature tears off the mining engineer's head without the slightest effort. The body falls to the ground, twitching. Holy God! After over overcoming your initial terror, you and the foreman both draw your weapons. We're in the we're in the thing. John Carpenter's the thing. What is going on? Oh my God! You do not know exactly what you are hoping for here. The monstrosity that writhes and shivers before you seems to be much more than you can handle, and perhaps even beyond the reach of otherworldly other world, of worldly weapons. Luckily, the opportunity to act is taken from you. There's a loud ripping sound, and the creature collapses in a hail of foul drops, as if suddenly it was entirely made of liquid. A liquid with that, that within mere seconds trickles and oozes into the soil, only until only a stinking dark area of discoloration remains. Just like that, the whole ghastly apparition is gone. Only Heshit's defiled corpse and Shamsi's, or whatever this was, shed skin is left. You and the foreman stand in utter disbelief, and after a while he speaks. So, you say this was supposed to be Heshit's niece? You nod, and he continues. Now I remember. No one, no wonder he was so awestruck and frightened when you entered. Heshit once mentioned to me briefly how his sister and her daughter were killed in some sort of an accident years ago, so this couldn't have been his niece in the first place. Then he looks at you straight in the eye. Listen, I can see you are as shocked as I am, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and just assume this wasn't a setup. I will have to report this to my superiors, and bloody well I can't do that without mentioning you, but I'll do my best not to insinuate you were somehow being a part of it. Still, I be believe it's best if you leave as quickly as possible, like right now. As you feel he is right, you hurriedly make your way back to the Comitatus. What the hell was that? That's the craziest thing I've ever encountered in this game, by far. <laughs> Holy God! And that's the end of that! Wild! Yep, the runaway, all done. Just a small formality? Oh, I gotta go to the Escoria Embassy. That's wild! I'm, I'm astounded. I don't, I don't even know what to do. I've lost it. Holy crap. Well, onto the road we go. That's the most amazing thing I've ever read. Uh, examine the plants, sure. We succeeded. Use our dowsing rod to find the source of water. Let's go ahead and gather the easily accessible water. We don't need to go crazy. And then uh, pause here. Or camp, sorry. Into the Crimson Gate we go. 
Perform their inspection. Uh, the license? And then turn you in. Alrighty, cool. Well, we have a lot of food, so I don't think we need to buy any. What we should do is fill out, well, not fill out, but get as much of our st uh, stocks of, of metal as we can. It looks like that's all they have, which is kind of surprising. But that's all we need. So why don't we ditch two more beasts of burden? And we'll let the horses carry a chunk of it. All right. Okay. Oh, just a second. Sorry. Pause real quick. Sorry about that. All right. So we're ready to go. I'm still recovering from the whole, the whole Shamsi fiasco. What? 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 They'll never explain it. I guarantee you. This game loves to have its mysteries. The fact that she was a tentacle monster that ripped a man's head off and then and then just dissolved into the sand. It reminds me of the you remember we had like a guy who got doppelgangered on the way to Devon like many many episodes ago and then he he like evaporated. Kind of reminds me of that. This place is wild. All right, to the crossroads we go. And in. Uh, we, we'll, we'll visit Buka later. It's fine. And. A long, it, it's always funny to me how long it takes your people to walk over to the village. All right, we've made it. Okay, so we now need to... I for oh, I should have checked in on what... Hold on. On what we needed to do to fix the realm gate. Oh, I'm stupid! <laughs> I had dragon steel in my, in my inventory. Oh, do you... I wonder. Does the... Dude. Actually, hold on. Hold on, I'm gonna be right back. I wanna see if, I'm gonna go back, and I wanna see if the Crimson Gate has Dragon Steel. I'll be right back, fear not. All right, I'm back. I've got good news and I've got some bad news, team. Bad news, or good news first, you can get Dragon Steel. I feel really stupid that I had six of it and I sold it because I need one to upgrade the gate. And I just so happen to have all of the other metal I need with me, which is wild. But I don't. I sold it in Devon for like 300 silver or something. H however, you can buy Dragon Steel at the Mines of Plenty. The problem is we need four rank four with the Ratharnak Alliance. The good news is I, I, I'm almost to rank four. I just need to do a little more work for them. So maybe we'll focus on that when we go back through the gate another time. But for now, we'll just head on over. We're all set to go. The other good news is we have we were able to take all of our metal through and uh, kind of just a minimal staff of fighters like we took 21 horses and we got all of our cargo plus a stack of marble so i think we're gonna make a killing here you're going to ahar kada hakterast and wazir high that's that's not where we're headed we're headed to the oil field and then kabur beyond so uh, we only have two movement which probably means we can't go anywhere today so let's rest eat a little bit of the food we have and then go ahead and leave oh thank god i was like you you ambushed me when i have very few fighters how dare you all right don't don't put a strain on your people just normal guarding we're at nines it's totally okay to do that we've we've reached a basic Manzio. Let's hire new fighters. Now we can we can guard effectively. Grab ourselves a beast of burden to to help out with the the movement of our peoples. Cargo is still doing fine. And then let's get two stacks of food and then some. And uh, 
Then we'll head south towards Kabur. Do you guys have anything for me to take with you? Take for you, I should say? Nope. All right, cool. Yeah, I was like, when I read that where I was like, I need dragon steel to upgrade the gate. I've I I've never felt my <laughs> stomach sink like that just from reading something in a game. I was like, oh, we had it all right there. And I didn't bother to remember that I needed dragon steel in order to upgrade the gate. And that's like such a rare commodity too. You'd think I would have committed that to memory. But uh, my memory is what it is. In we go. We have nothing to hide. And we will indicate that we are friends with the Hanjari. When did that happen? That's kind of fun. All right, sell our, our not ill-gotten, but our goods. Oh man, it's, it's so much more expensive, I love it. You make 10 silver per, or 10, yeah, 10 silver coins per silver unit. Crazy, we just made 200. Not not in net, but total, that's, that's crazy. Um, iron is going for, I just gotta like admire this, it's so fun. Five per. Tin is three per. Copper, I think, is similar. And then I think bronze is is also similar. Yeah, it's like the, the lesser known metals, you'd like over double your money on them. And then the 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 iron you like twice as much, and then I think silver is similar. Yeah, it's just look at that! We're above 4,000 silver. That's crazy. Also, here's some marble. <laughs> Alright, cool. Well, we should probably pay the prince a visit, since we did deliver his letter. Before we go, let's explore the city. You never know what you'll find. You have it upon a small tribe of ashmen congregating in a side street in southern Kaljahar Suk. They come from the east and are visiting Kabur to sell off their stock of trade goods. <gasps> this has happened before. However... Oh, neat! New saddlebags? Are they better? Mount cargo? Outrider cargo. Whoa! This is actually awesome! Because this will make our horses even better for taking stuff through the gate? I think. Buy it, yes. A stock of leather. They... we would buy them for 3-9. And what could we sell a, a stack of leather for in Kabur? I actually have space this time, so I'm not... I'm not just throwing money into the into the void. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just buy it and sell it and make a profit. And then I believe ivory should probably be the same, right? 6-2? Sell it for 8-6? Absolutely. It's wild. As long as you have space for it, it's wild that you could just buy it from them and then sell it. Because this average price is 3-1. I just, I'm not, I want to make sure I'm not crazy. Yeah, yeah. Average price is 3 runs and you sell it for 4-3. You immediately make money. Amazing. There's no downside. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we visit the prince in the palace. To the palace. Visit the seneschal. Discuss the prince's errands. And uh, we've done the errand. Uh, report on the success. And we have completed it. We gained Bros and Hanjari. We would like to take on a new task. Yes. Okay. Prince Faisal's taste bears the mark of perfection, a true evident, a truth evident even to those who have only met him briefly. His penchant for superior materials manifests itself in his choices of what adorns and fortifies the jewel of the North. He says, his voice taking on a subtle tone of admiration and approval alike. Being a trade prince, not only... Not only are such opulent inclinations his birthright, but the ample supplies of the princely coffers also grant him the means to indulge himself. At times, however, the acquisition of these materials comes at great effort, and therein lies your role, Vagris. Akir pauses for effect, and, and a pregnant yet somber silence hangs in the air for a few moments. Then he moves on to the details. Cerulius crystals are harvested in Lumen, a town nestled in the bosom... Is he saying this? Oh, he, he is saying this. Uh, it just didn't have the... What are those? It's not a parenthesis. Quotations. <laughs> I forgot my, my grammar symbols. 
a town nestled in the bosom of the crystal forest of Sargo Kala, a, and prepared for craftsmen and mages to work with. Every once in a while, his grace commissions artisans or sor sorcerers to create something impeccable for him. In an effort to have some of the pale blue crystals at the ready, your charge is to bring a large quantity from Lumen, which we shall graciously purchase from you at a considerable premium. Please do not take too long to deliver, as the prince might already have a wish for something to be crafted from Cer Ceruleus, the seneschal says in his formal tone is tinged with a faint disdain. He then discloses the name of the prince's preferred crystal merchant, and the whereabouts of his stall within the marketplace of Lumen. We will do so. That's easy peasy. Excellent, the seneschal exclaims, in a bor is born of contentment, yet those astute enough can detect a nuance of impatience. Uh, he said this before. Okay, cool. That is good news. I would like to see if the prince wants to tell me about Kellyanos yet. No. <laughs> this man hates me. All right. Well, I guess the question is, what do we do now? Because, like, the plan, the, the thing we need to go is just back over to the other side, right? But we have to wait 56 days. So, I guess we could just engage in our typical trading, where we take stuff over to the bridge. Oh, actually, yeah, we should take stuff over to the bridge and figure out the guy's memory loss, Brutus's memory loss, the, the horrible human that Brutus is. And then we should mi visit Tamara and Uten Grey again, um, and then maybe make our way back to Kaber. Yeah, let's let's do that. So, Fort Erebus, valid. Oh, we need uh, we need uh, beasts. We need beasts of all kinds, and workers, and fires. Okay, we're good. Fifteen. Four beasts. Is that good? Yeah, we're like right on the edge of what we we can handle. How's our cargo looking? We could definitely dis mount some of these dudes and if we look at our oh right that's part of the problem <laughs> it's our our wheels are not achieved or achieved uh uh assigned this is just for consumption but it's still useful now i'm curious about the saddlebags though oh those are a harness oh they're also miscellaneous hmm because this is better for fighting but these are good for cargo. I don't anticipate fighting people on the road all that much. So maybe we put you guys back into, okay. I'm curious. All right, so we can have three guys on horses. Everybody else needs to haul cargo. For now, we might not have enough space, or we might not have uh, enough cargo for them all to be dismounted anyway. So Phlegonis Bridge for sure. Fort Erebus as well. Like we could do a Wazir High and then the caverns as well would be good. Stigius, Karen Keep is Carav Caverns is good. Wazir High. Phlegonis Bridge. Phlegonis Bridge. We're probably getting kind of close. We also want to make sure we have enough food. Seven to eight days. Plus the the caves are in the middle. So nine days worth. And then what can we take? So we got Phlegatus Bridge here. Is the do, Does the Ratharnak Alliance live here? It doesn't, looks like it. Which is, oh no, here they are. Rats. <laughs> they did. We need stuff that gives us rep with them, and the level one stuff doesn't give us rep anymore. As you go up in reputation, the lower level stuff uh, stops giving you reputation, which is kind of understandable. It'd be like, you're doing a job for them, and you're like, what do I get? And they're like, you've done this for us many times. Why would Why would this be a good thing? <laughs> Let's see here. Might as well get the last of the supplies, I, I say. And then, uh... And then we just hit the road, I suppose. Yeah. I guess we have to rest here first. Let's go ahead and rest. On the ground is fine. 
and then we hit the road, headed to the gatehouse. We've already paid. My phone's blowing up like crazy. All right, off we go. And yeah, like it's now it's now it's just trying to get rep with the prince, so he'll tell me about the stupid Dreamwalker people. <laughs> I'm like, I'm well aware that they're out there. You don't have to keep secrets. It'd be funny if you could just like, you didn't have to ask him. What if you were just like, I'm gonna go wander around the wasteland until I find this place. Like why why is it such a big secret? What are what are the secrets going on, hmm? What did you do? Why do you have to feel ashamed? These are the questions. I can't believe we broke 4,000. Oh, hey! No road tax for me. I like that. I don't know what happened in the other part of the world. What the heck? <laughs> in the other part of the world. I don't think we need to... Oh, maybe we need to... Ah, there. There we go. That that made things much better for us. I was going to say, I don't know if we need to ma do a makeshift barricade. And it certainly didn't help us. So why don't we go ahead and flank them? A counter-offensive, some would say. Although that's its own thing. Ah, uh, you got yourself wounded? You you got yourself ki outright killed! <laughs> oh, no. How am I supposed to send a, a message home to your wife? Or, or husband? Got yourself murdered fighting basic chakra. Elani got hurt. Which is not great. But she didn't heal. We did gain a horse, so we got <laughs> we got a horse back, and a guy died. Oh, th there's just too much to carry. Well, we'll just take the bone, I guess. And then onward. We'll drop the bone off in the caverns. With whoever's in charge of the, the market there. Let's try to regenerate some vigor. Fighting always takes the vigor out of your your fighting company. We'll zoom on up here. And then go ahead and rest. And then into the caverns. Alright, drop off you. And then sell this bone. And then do you guys have anything for the bridge or the, the fort? Does not look like it. Okay, that's fine. We could get rid of some of our beasts then. We should get we should get the, the the water here. And then I think we should ditch some of the beasts. Although maybe what if we just like Okay, we can only go that far. I'm a little confused. Why can't I assign more horses when there's still three spaces available? Should I fill them up? I suppose I should. Oh, back to cargo. Just because the supplies are cheap here, and we'll use them, so. All right, back onto the road, and we'll head over to the bridge. And then once we get to Phlegatus, we'll probably pause the episode there, and then we'll pick up with us figuring out what the hell Brutus's problem is. Maybe we'll bring him to judgment, because he's a bad, bad person. That's all I remember about Brutus, is that he he harms women and he's a drunk asshole. I'm like, how come... I, uh, well, they did tell me why no, everybody's kind of turned a blind eye. He's like a potter or something, and like everybody uses his wares. He's just a bad man. Sometimes you have to bring bad people to justice, even if you want to make use of their goods. Another potter will show up, or something. Somebody will fill the void. When there's money to be made, things will happen. All right, turn in our stuff. We do need to make our way up to Fort Erebus, and we need to be here at Urk Hall. So one, two, three days out. How far away is the fort? Three days away. So honestly, we should probably just go to the fort and then come back, and it, like, won't really change the date we're here. Um, and that looks like the only thing that's available. So why don't we do that? Well, I'll set that all up 
off camera and then we'll come back for next episode so if you guys enjoyed the episode click the like button it helps me out a lot if you want to see more Vagris the Riven Realms or the other videos I have going on on the channel subscribe to the channel that also helps me out a lot but until next time everybody I hope you have a good one and I'll see you in the next video bye bye everybody